Um, first off, I was going to say, actually, I was over, I used to actually work over the highball, Tom, and I met you last time that Human Centipede came out, very briefly, like you were over here, and so congratulations, man. Like, it's, I think it's been quite a run for you. Yeah, yeah definitely. A roller coaster ride, man. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I believe it. Um, what, uh, there's so many different things about this film from the first film, um, you know, whether it comes uh, visually from the color, you Definitely. know. Um, why did you decide to go for that aesthetic? Um, you talked about it briefly last night. Can you expand a little bit? Why black and white this time versus... Yeah, I, I really wanted to make a totally different film than the first one. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of filmmakers, they copy their, their first film, and usually it, it fails. And uh, I really wanted to make something different, a totally different film. And uh, I wanted a different feel to it. Uh, part one is very clinical, it has uh, all those uh, yeah, uh, colors that are clinical. Part one, I wanted to be black and white and, and dirty. It's ha all handheld. Well, in part one, everything is very smooth on tracks and stuff. And it was really a choice because uh, uh, with the, the character of, of, of like uh, Dr. Heiter, uh, the, that fitted the clinicalness. Mm -hmm. And with a guy like Martin in the film, the way it looks really uh, fits, I think. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, uh, talking to you, Lawrence, about about your uh, performance, um, <clears throat> it's it's said sometimes that no character truly believes that they're a villain whenever yeah. they're looking. Do you view uh, Martin as a as a villain when you watch the film, or no, do you? No, I I, I think um, he's an incredibly sympathetic character that. If if he'd had a bit of love or an understanding when he was growing up, you know, he would have turned out completely differently. You know, yeah. I think it's entirely about the people that should have protected him not protecting him and abusing him instead, uh, and that's why he's turned out the way he is. Sure. I think uh, I know when we did the cast and crew screening, a, a friend of mine came with me and she said uh, there's something. That, about Martin, where you want you want to go up to him and, and hug him, <laughs> and when it, it just seems to be that throughout the film, he just makes bad mistakes, mm -hmm. and you keep wanting to say, no, Martin, don't, don't <laughs> do it, don't, just let them go now, <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, so yeah. I, I think there is that sympathy with Martin, but also, I mean, when I watch it, I also see something like he's as much of a. An animal, like in the way that the centipede's just a creature doing its own thing, mm -hmm. it's not good or bad. Mm -hmm. There's something about that with Martin as well. He's just going about its own little business, and the fact that it happens to evolve <laughs> <laughs> mutilation of other people is something uh, regrettable, should we say. Is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and it's an, it's an interesting point because I don't think that he looks at it as an, an experiment. You know, whereas in the first film, it was clearly like that. It was more about achieving something. Whereas I felt, well, it, it is about achieving something. But it, sure, for, I think with, in this film, it's it's about the the father that it, his natural father abused him is in jail. The surrogate father that the doctor father figure the doctor uh, that the mother's trying to include in the family a bit uh, is obviously disgusting mm -hmm. uh, and is a, another potential abuser of Martin. So I think Martin fixates on Dr. Heiter yeah. as as the father figure he wishes he had. Sure. Uh, and in order to gain that father's love, wants to prove himself worthy of it by uh, creating the centipede and forcing his imagination on to real people. But yeah. he doesn't have that kind of empathy with real people because he, 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 um, you know, he's emotionally and socially kind of retarded by yeah. his background and by the way he was brought up. When you get that impression, whenever with certain characters that he's connecting, whether he's brushing the hair or yeah, there are moments of pause. Yeah, I, I think he genuinely kind of wants people to enjoy being in the centipede. Yeah. And I, I think with uh, like <laughs> Miss Yeni's character, uh, I think there is a thing of he expects her to be grateful or at this touching bit of love that he's given to her. Art extending into life, so to speak, so to speak yeah, yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. 
Makes or sense. he's actually making her whole. Uh, as a, uh, that's that's his little present from the heart right. to to her yeah. by making her so whole. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, yeah, sweet. yeah. I was gonna say I'm I'm not so sure that uh, Miss Yeti found it to be as agreeable. It's that Orlando thing of of uh, where Orlando goes to, uh, as a man is sort of saying to the woman that he loves, "You will come with me. Why? Because I love you. You're mine. Mm. You know, and it is that." Not recognizing the other person mm -hmm. might have a might different have uh, or should have a choice in the matter, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, Ashlyn, how did you prepare? I mean, this is the second, you know, second time you went down this road. So, how did you, um, how do you prepare for this type of? You know, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of dialogue, which I thought was a very bold, bold, bold choice. Uh, how did you get into that mindset emotionally? Um, for this one, because the first one. Said before, like the first one, I felt like we were making a movie, mm -hmm. and so this one, that one had like more of like a character I could base Jenny off of, and you know, working with Ashley and Aki, like you know, and Dieter. It was just this amazing little community. So for this one, when Tom came to me with the idea of you know, you're going to be playing a version of yourself, yeah. and it's just an extended version of me, mm -hmm. which is this you know, very you know self-centered, yes. you know, because everyone in the film, they need to have this sense of, like, you don't like them. There's a reason why you're, you you don't actually feel that bad for them in the end. You're like, yeah, well, you were a bad person. You know, if you would have just shown this man, like, some compassion or some love, which we should do as human beings, you probably, you know, wouldn't suffer how you do in your life. Yeah. And um, so for this one, it was kind of fun because Tom and I kind of got to play around with the idea of, you know, making fun of the actress. So, for me, it was I didn't base her off of anyone. Yeah. Know, but she was just so she was just a fun like type of you know getting to expose the the arrogance that some women have sure. as being you know a new actress and saying you know oh, I've been in a film, Quentin Tarantino is calling me you know right. that's so just it's arrogant and naive at the same time it's just like how can you be so retarded to think that that's going to happen to you for real? Sure. And then she ends up in her situation. So, right. you know, it's, it's, for me, preparing for it was just fun. It yeah. was just like, I was excited to start filming. I was excited to meet everybody and just work with them. And it was such an amazing cast to work with. So, yeah. bravo to everybody. That's, that's interesting because uh, I never kind of thought about that. Every single person, um, you know, Lawrence, that, that Martin's character meets always has some off comment. You know, yeah. like, oh, it's well, a... apart from the family. Exactly. Uh, and, and I think the reason why Martin wants to get them and include them in his, his century is because he wants that family. He wants, you know. family. He right. wants to be part of that family. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the reason why he, he's getting the people that pick on him and he wants to draw them into the centipede mm -hmm. is not because he hates them, it's because he wants to show them, you know, get to know me and you'll like me. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm going to force you to get to know me. Except for right. the neighbor, because you did choose him first to knock out his teeth. You made that decision. Yeah. Martin made that decision. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's but okay. but you're right though. There is there is the moment whenever he's you know like it's very intense and you're kind of halfway through the film and he's walking by and then he stops and looks at the baby. And yeah. It's like mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you're like okay, well he clearly you know what I mean like yeah. he. I, so yeah, that makes but sense. I, I, to me. But I think that's the that's the that's the one character he empathizes with. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. because he sees himself as the same. Right. Yeah. As the child. Right. Kind of a yeah, kind of a, a shelter or not sheltered, but a depraved child in a sense. You know. Well, yeah, but also you know there's something so, um, socially and psychologically kind of stuck in yeah, or certainly pre adolescence about Martin. Sure. You know, so. Well, yeah, I mean, with the living with the mother and still kind of uh, yeah, I understand yeah. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think anyone that lives with the I live with my parents at the moment. Okay. And you just revert. They just treat you like right, you right. Know, you're, you're <laughs> like my my mum brought up the beautiful baby contest they won when I was two. Uh -huh. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, because yeah, I, I understand that. That was like thirty-eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're always a child. To, yeah. To, to you know. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. Um, Tom, there there are certainly some. Um, some people I think will find objectionable scenes. For example, um, yeah. you know, for example, with uh, the rape scene yeah. and things like that. Um, 
what uh, what made you decide to put that in? And there's, I mean, I know there's kind of been discussion from a bunch of different writers about whether or not that would you be willing to keep that for an R rating or how, like how much you're holding on to that? No, like like where the rape scene comes from is uh, uh, a lot of people said to me in the in the first film, why doesn't Dr. Heiter has uh, sex with this centipede. A lot of uh, audiences were thinking about it all the time. And I said, no, uh, Dr. Heiter is a very uh, yeah, uh, clinical man. He doesn't like human beings and he certainly is not thinking about sex. It's yeah. uh, an experiment. But everybody, uh, no, not everybody, but so many people were thinking about it. Expecting it. it. Yeah, expe yes. yeah, you, yeah, they're, they're walking, you can easily have sex with them. Yeah. So, uh, a, a guy like Martin in the story, yeah, would do it, so I, I wanted that scene in there because that's oh, it was on everybody's mind. That and I, then I really put it in. I'm not afraid for uh, for that controversy at all. Right. Um, for the third one, are you uh, not? I know you can't give anything away, but are you expecting to have a little bit more of a balance between the two? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, part three will give uh, a lot of answers, and in the end, uh, all films will fit together like a human centipede. You can actually connect them, and you have one four and a half hour uh, ride yeah. and you get all kinds of different emotions and part three is going to be a totally different film again than nice. one and two. Absolutely. That's the whole, uh, whole purpose of it. Yeah. Will, will Fantastic Fest get to see it hopefully? Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah, I love it here so uh, yeah. if I get a chance I'll bring it back. Cool, great. Well, we're glad that you're here and thank you so much for the interview. We thank appreciate you.